Hello, my name is Rosa Maria Kostic Cisneros and I am collaborating with the Independent Theatre Hungary. I'm very happy to sit down with Michael Collins, who is a performer, an author um, of the work It's a Cultural Thing, or Is It? And we'll be talking today about the work. Um, but before we get into that, it'd be great, Michael, if you could introduce yourself um, and, and then link us into the, the project. Um, my name is Michael Collins. Uh, I'm a member of the Irish Travelling Community. I've been involved in the acting business uh, since 1986. My first professional job was in 1987 as a, an Irish traveller actor. And then about, I'd say about 93 or 94, I began to write my own stuff about the travelling community and traveller stories and traveller cultures traveller culture and the way travellers are perceived and treated in, in Irish society and out through Europe. And so can you and tell And one us of the first uh, shows I wrote was... Yeah, go ahead. One of the first shows you wrote. Yes, please. Um, we seem to be just breaking up a little there. I did the... the but um, the very first play I wrote was uh, a play called Cultural Ting. And Cultural Ting is uh, loosely based on uh, my own story of um, growing up in Ireland as a member of the Irish travelling community from the early 60s, where travellers would have um, had a nomadic lifestyle <clears throat> and would have made a living from um, tin smitten, chimney sweeping, seasonal work and buying and selling horses, um, making and painting wagons and doing the markets. I want to travel from, from village to village and town to town. And then um, it, it, will, it, will, it, it comes from the 1960s right through his childhood up to where he's a teenager and then into adulthood. And the experiences then about um, leaving the countryside, being forced out of the countryside because um, social welfare came in, and the tin smitten and the way the travel way of life was dying out. So they brought in social welfare, and in order to have social welfare, you needed a permanent address. So we were forced into the big towns and cities, and pushed out to the suburbs into these big fields, which had no facilities like water, toilets, electricity, or refuge collection. And then my family would have moved to Dublin and grown up in Dublin in the, in, in the field and then having to try and get into school. And because we were members of the traveling community, we weren't allowed to mix or weren't accepted into the schools um, where there was uh, settled people schools, as we call them. So they built those free fabs for traveller schools and they would have been placed at the back of boys schools and girls schools and we would have ended up in a girls school about 30 or 40 travellers yeah and it was um, segregated play time at the time uh, we weren't allowed to play in the in the playground with the settled children and at that time uh, in in society in general there would have been segregated social welfare, segregated accommodation. So basically we were kind of pushed out into the margins of our society and we would have grew up in that. Now, in the play itself, because you're a child, you don't see this. And the way the story is told, it's told with um, uh, uh, fun, laughter, sadness, uh, and 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 sometimes a little bit of music and a little bit of uh, a little bit of singing in it. So the story is told in a way. It's actually told through the eyes of a child, and that's the reason why it works. Because when I wrote the piece, I was saying, how do I do this play now without repeating the one thing or trying to get people to feel sorry? Oh, here we go again. These poor travellers were treated badly and. Uh, now they want to tell us what we've done wrong. So what I've done was I created a young character because everybody at one stage or another was a child and you don't actually see 
mm. what society does to you as a child. You just get on with life, you enjoy it. And I have to say, even thinking back when I was a child, the freedom, growing up with all your cousins, the sense of the extended family, your grandparents were on the side, all your cousins were on the side. We used to go to the fields playing, uh, climbing trees, you had your own bin house. So it was wonderful growing up. It's only when you look back as an adult, when you have your own kids, and they kind of go, oh, yeah, that was wrong. This could have been done better. Because when it comes to education and employment, we were very badly done, done by. Because mm -hmm. I, would have grew, I would have grew up in a massive extended family. And I'd say about 80, maybe 95% of them couldn't read or write as adults. So that means that they couldn't go for, for employment. You couldn't go for uh, jobs that non-travelers could go for, you know, like the, the settled people's jobs. And then when you did go for jobs in the, the, the low skilled jobs, you couldn't actually say who you were. You had to keep your identity to yourself. You were afraid that you might meet people who were very nice people who were not members of the traveling community, but you couldn't express who you are because you didn't want, you were afraid that you might, they'd find out who you are and then the prejudice would come out and the discrimination and you'd lose your job. So we had that other side of it as well. And it's quite powerful, um, this, this, you know, telling the story, but through the eyes of a child. Um, and, you know, it's when we're mad, you know, sometimes I remember someone once told me I was very mad um, with someone and they said, you know, Rosa, imagine them as a child. And when I could do that, it softened something for me. And so it's lovely that mm. um, you, you know, you through the eyes of a child, it, it's more accessible. The, you know, the, the audience might not feel so harangued, so kind of overwhelmed by the by the 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 work that they could then perhaps find something that's relatable in there so it's a lovely twist and and in a way to to also offer something to the viewer to the audience I, I i totally agree with you like when i when i when the when the light went on in my head oh yeah the eyes of a child you, I, I knew that i could get away with so much and yes. you could be so truthful because uh, there's a saying from the mouth of babes and when you're playing the child, like you're an adult on stage and then you turn into this child character, the audience seem to accept you yeah. as the child character mm -hmm. and then you can get away with everything. <laughs> and the, the, sh the show is quite funny in, in, in like, particularly when you have to go to, like if, you could, if you're trying to imagine living in a field with no running water or electricity or toilets. And then you had to get up in the middle of the night. Now you could get away with doing your number two, as they say, but when you had to do your number one, you had to find a place to go. And one of the stories in the play was we had these, it was in the summer time of the year and we had these high nettles. So we'd walk into the middle of the nettles and we'd get boards and we'd flatten the nettles and we'd make a den. So you could go and use that as a toilet. And then in the winter time, the nettles died. So you had no place to hide to go to the toilet. So you, you go over to the wall and then you had to bring somebody with you to keep an eye out because you didn't want to, somebody to catch you with your trousers down. And you didn't care if settled people caught you because you didn't know them. It was the travelers you were ashamed of. And now you can imagine a little young fellow saying, anybody coming there, Johnny? Johnny, you sure? No, there's nobody coming. All right. And then this little girl walks out and says, I seen you shiting at the wall last night. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Do you not shite yourself? Do you not? You know, so you're trying to create that image. And then the way to close the image is, if you think it was bad for us children to try and find a place to go to the toilet, could you imagine what it was like for our mothers at the time? and some of them pregnant. And that's how you close the line. So you, you hooked them as a child, and then you let them off as a child. You hooked them on the line, 
if you could imagine it was our mothers. And then you just go straight into something else. And then when I went back to school next day, the nun says, right, children, it's your playtime now. And then you go back, you into another story. And I think that's the beauty of doing something like this because it is part of society. It is part of who we are. It is part of who they are because of the way society was at the time and the way people were treated. And not just like the Irish traveling community. You had the Romani gypsies all over Europe. You had the Aborigines, you had the Native American Indians, you had the African Americans, you had the working class people in working class areas all over the world, all over Europe. So you were trying to open up to everybody. And I remember doing this show in India and uh, the, the, the way people, and I done it in, in Leeds in, in England as well, and I done it in London. And I remember that there was black people in the audience, Nigerians and, and uh, some Chinese people, and they could actually relate mm. to some of the stories mm. that because, because you were the child that they were. Yes. And that's how it worked. Yeah, mm. that's how it worked. And so these stories, you said at the beginning that a lot of them came from your own experiences. Was yeah. that true or was it just other stories as well that maybe people told you and did you kind of mix some of them? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, most of the stories would have come from my own childhood because I was born in a time where travelers were coming to the end of the nomadic lifestyle. Mm. So I would have slept in the tent. I would have slept in the old barrel top wagon, which it, it's very similar. It, it, it's not similar to look at to the gypsy wagon, but it's the same idea as the Romany wagon. And then the whole move from, from the traditional way of life to being forced into uh, big cities and towns because of social welfare and then being pushed to the margins of society in the field with all these different travelers who you didn't know because travelers never traditionally live together in big crowds. They live together in their own small extended family, which would be maybe four or five families would live together. And you had a, a kind of a circle that you would have traveled around the country because you knew you do the tinsmithing and you do your horse stealing and you do your seasonal work. So you went around and again, you got back to where you were staying the first time. They were ready to accept you to do something else. And then the whole move to Dublin and then the experience of living on a, a traveller site with all these different travellers, then growing up in Dublin and the word knacker being used and the treatment of travellers when they went to the shops or went to a restaurant or went out to drink. And then the whole school experience where you weren't um, accepted. They had their, as they used to say, their quota or their fair share of the members of the traveling community. So they might have two travelers in each class and then the rest weren't accepted. And, it, it, and, and, and then that whole thing about segregated play times and then when you got a bit older and you had to go for social welfare, it was a segregated uh, social welfare system. Then when you got older and you got married and you were trying to get your family settled in proper accommodation, you had the whole thing around this, this segregated um, accommodation. So there was everything was seemed to be set in a way that was pushing us away from who we were. And down the road where they were saying, it was almost just keep those people out mm. of our area and then you had people saying you know particularly when they came to accommodation that they lowered the price of the, 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 the houses um lower the price of land and none of this was ever true and, 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 and we noticed that over the years that if you build a housing estate beside a traveler's site it gets sold every bit as quick as it would if you built it anywhere else because accommodation in ireland is so hard to get people mm. don't care they're just glad to be inside their own home. And then the, the whole thing around, you know, um, going out with your friends and you play soccer, then you, you grew up and you played soccer with settled people. Then they go out to the pub for a drink and then you be the only one that be refused or 12 young men that looked exactly 
like you and who you were, but because you were a member of the traveling community, I'm sorry, you're not, you, you can't come in here today. And then trying to deal with that internally. So I would have say that the play itself was like therapy for me mm. because every time I'd done it, I let something go. Mm. And I was hoping that people, that particularly members of the traveling community and the settled community, when they would see it, they would let something go or accept mm. something. You know, because the way the play kind of worked was that you enjoyed it and then maybe a week, now this is what I've been told by people who've seen the show, a week after something would happen uh, in their daily life and they go, oh, now I know what he was saying. Now I understand what the story mm -hmm. means. Mm -hmm. Where the story could have been really funny or really sad, mm -hmm. they would pick up on that. And I think that's, um, yeah, that's, that, that's, but to your question, yes, I would have used an awful lot of my own experience because when I start writing, one of the best piece of advice I got from somebody was write from your own, write your own stories, write from what's in yourself, write what's in your head and your heart. And I would have listened um, because when I was growing up, I couldn't read or write very well. I had a great memory. It was one of the things that developed from not being able to read or write was I when somebody would tell me something I would always remember it so when I'd be sitting there and you'd be sitting at the fire as a child or you'd be sitting at the the table as a teenager or you'd be sitting at the the bar having a pint as an adult I'd listen to people talking mm -hmm. and I'd take their stories mm -hmm. and I always had the ability if I'd done a show in one county and I went to the next county and I I used to try and meet uh, traveller families or travellers who were working, say, within the training centres or who are youth workers or community workers. And if they told me something, I would rope it into the show that night because it was important for that area. So the work, like it's a, a, a cultural thing in progress means, progress means I be always telling another story that might come from the day that I landed to set the show up. And I was talking to some travellers and, and, and uh, I think tra the travel culture and the Romani culture is the way that we can hold and tell stories. It's, you know, I had so many questions, but you've on a way already answered many of them. And one of those was, um, you know, about any stories that people might have told you after f viewing it? Because you wrote the play, I think, in, or it was first performed in 2005. And so, you know, a lot of time has gone by since then. So, but as you're saying, you constantly are adding things to it and it's changing depending on where you are and who you're meeting. And so are you still performing it? And do you still kind of, um, responds to the the community where you are in its current the way it, it you know the way it's performed and, and now yeah I would have um, revamped the show about two years ago okay because uh, it, it was a one-hander then it was a two-hander then it went back to a one-hander and because of the situation of young people in Ireland um, and the whole education system, because mm -hmm. we have more and more younger travellers going to primary school and secondary school. Now, not third level education yet, very few. And there was a couple of things happening in the education system. And there was a couple of things happening to young travellers. So I revamped it and brought in a young actor who's my son, Johnny. Yeah. And Johnny's just gone 16 now. So Johnny would have been a, maybe 10 or 11 at the time. And he would have, I would have used him as he was the son and I was the adult. So I was still telling my story, but I was telling my story to him. And then he was telling his story to me at, in the year two, 2017 or 2018. Yes. So the audience, the audience was getting two different stories almost two different worlds of the same show about the traveling community. Mm -hmm. So he's, my, my story was going one way and his was going another way. Yes. And we combined it. So it was almost like I was telling him my story and he was telling me his story. And that's how I revamped it. 
and uh, it it we premiered it down in Galway for the first time, and it worked very well. So I was both of us were over the moon because obviously when you change something, you're always worried. I wonder will this work, but it actually worked very well, and that's what I'm, we're doing at the moment. And yes, we're still performing, and we haven't performed anything. I haven't done anything in. I'd say 19 months because of covert, <laughs> which is very hard. Mm -hmm. So what I done was I wrote a script, uh, a film script, which um, I'm working on now. And uh, it's given me something to do to keep my mind occupied sure. in these hard times. So yes, yeah. So yes, we are, we're still, we're still modernizing it. And sometimes we, go back and find a story that might relate to something that's being done today. And then we'd use that story as well. Okay, fantastic. And is there, can you tell me a little bit about the title? Cause it's an, it's an catchy title. It's also a quite um, intense title and it's, you yeah. know, it's asking a question immediately. So if you could tell me a little bit about the title. Yeah, the, the, the title, A Cultural Thing, or is it um, uh, A Cultural Thing, or is it A Traveller in Progression? Uh, a Cultural Thing, or is it, it's, it, uh, you know, when you're trying to write something, uh, it's like a, another show I done, which was about a father losing a son through suicide, because suicide is very, very high in the traveling mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to come up with a name for that. And I remember walking around. And I remember seeing magpies. And when I was a child, travelers were very um, uh, uh, superstitious. And if you seen magpies outside the door, you wouldn't go out. And you'd be blessing your face, one for sorrow, two for joy. And then because, uh, you know, and, 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 and then one for sorrow, two for joy, three for girl, four for boy, five for something, you know. So, and, but, there was there was a word in it, it like you would lose if you if you seen one magpie you have bad luck for the day, and if you seen two it was one for sorrow two for joy, so some people would see one magpie but it's blessed up face twice to wait for the next one, so I said I seen a magpie landing on a pylon and then I went oh yeah, magpies on the pylon that'd work because both travelers and settled people would relate to the name, mm -hmm. and then cultural thing. Uh, when you talk about culture, Irish culture, which um, Irish culture is a beautiful culture. We have a beautiful land. We have history. And then from the eyes of the Europeans or the rest of the world, the Irish culture is mythic. We have leprechauns. We have pints of Guinness. We're all very highly educated. We have the Book of Kells. And then you have the traveling community, which our culture, which was the nomadic lifestyle, the tin smitten, uh, the romantic stories, the romantic songs, the beautiful big extended families, living freely out through society, no worries, everybody gets on well. And then you have the other side of it where you have the discrimination, the racism, the prejudice, the hurt that's caused to people, the way people are seen by other members of society and is that our part of our culture so the line is a cultural thing or is it mm. so which of them is it is that part of our culture or is this notion that we have part of our culture and progress is that the word you know a cultural thing now and then a travel in progress is we have never lost or walked away or denied who we were and who we are. Even though we were trying, they tried to assimilate us, they tried to push us out to the margins of society. They tried to block our ways when it came to trying to make a living, trying to rear our children, trying to have a life. And that's where the, the, a cultural thing, or is it? Yes. And that's where that title comes from. Okay. Because, because of the romantic notion of Irish culture, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so my final question, if you could um, describe or maybe um, 
use three words about to, to describe the play what might you um, say what three words or phrases might come to mind um, three words would be entertainment um, a brilliant story and well worth looking at Mm, would be the three lines I would come up with off the off the top of my head. Yes, of course. I know. Uh, to, ex <laughs> to explain the three uh, <laughs> to explain the three questions is uh, this show is being told uh, for the first time by a member of an ethnic minority group who happens to be an actor, mm. a storyteller. Uh, these stories are real stories. They're stories that some of the some of the stories are related to the traveling community, but some of the stories are related to society. They're related to other people. They're related related to other uh, groups like the Roman Gypsies, um, like um, uh, the Native American Indians. Like so, these stories are. If you got somebody to tell you my story from. Any other community they could tell you that story. And I think that's the beauty of that story. But being up on stage and inviting uh, an audience into your life, what affects you as a young child growing up in the traveling community? And being able to relate and tell beautiful stories and some of them very hard and very sad stories. Yeah. And ha having the audience, you having the audience in the palm of your hand, because every so often I would stop to see could I hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you would, you, you would hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're, you're saying to yourself, just from my own perspective of what it means to me, is, oh yeah. They're, they're right there with now. you, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could, I could actually, I could actually not say anything, and I still have them. Yeah. And I think once they come and see the show, uh, especially the live show, they would feel the energy, the vulnerability, the sadness, mm. the happiness mm. um, of of that character. And I think for me, that would cover the three questions: is that. Like looking at on tube is great. Um, doing a show on on online uh, with the circumstances that we're living in now, we've no choice. But you cannot beat a live performance mm. when you can feel them and they can feel you. When you can hear them breathe or cough, and they can hear you pacing up and down at the back of the stage, wait and come on very nervously, and I think all that adds to the show and to the stories. I hope that was the question you were asking. Yes, no, it's it's a lovely way to, to I think, end the conversation and to honor, you know, all of the stories and the places that you've toured the work and where you've shared the work and, you know, your vulnerability and your sharing of your story ha is inviting people to share theirs but reflect on their own so thank you so much thank yes. you so much yes and um yeah, very welcome yes and no i just uh, thank you and i i love the the idea of telling the story through the eyes of a child and so i i yes. you know we can go out into the world kind of remembering that you know yeah. rediscovering the world through the eyes of a child remembering um, the good and the bad, but also through the eyes of a child. So thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so much for sitting down with us and for sharing. You're more than welcome. Thank you.